Hello, everybody. Um, I am live again Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, every single week, pretty much, without fail, looking at surviving an IRS audit in the cannabis industry. And I am downstairs. I move about my house, home office, um, like many of us, in the accounting stage. Um, I've been doing a lot of research just on the economy, the industry, um, just highly interests me, first of all, and this actually does affect surviving an IRS audit. So just looking at, at the economy as a whole, and we're struggling right now, but we're in this really weird dynamic. Um, in most recessions, there's lots of unemployed and few jobs. Right now in the U.S., there's 11 million jobs right this second, and there's only 6 million unemployed. So even if all those 6 million people um, actually got busy, we'd still be short half a million or five million jobs. You can look at any industry, whether it's doctors, lawyers, CPAs, whatever, baby boomer dem demographics are hitting. Um, COVID made things even probably a little bit quicker and worse um, as far as people retiring early or the great resignation or whatever you want to call it. But it was started well before this. Um, so many people like me that are almost 60 are starting to age out. And if you look at the CPA profession, 75% of CPAs and hence CFOs by, as a lot of those are, are older too, about 75% of that population is over 65 right this second. So if you're building a company right now and you're looking out over the next 10 years, what does that mean? That means, well, last time I looked, there was around 600,000 CPAs. So if 75% of them are about to retire, we're going to go from 600,000 to 150,000. So that's going to be a big change in the world, not just cannabis accounting, um, a big, big change. Now, what about, about the industry overall? Well, are more people becoming CPAs? Well, in, in 2010, 50,000 people applied and sat for the CPA exam. In 2020, it was down to 30,000. So you've got Fewer people joining, more people retiring. Um, so the good news is if you're a non-retiring CFO or CPA, you are going to have the pick of the litter. Um, simple supply and demand. There's going to be a huge demand for that level of skill set. And you're going to be able, you think turnover is bad now. Um, if you're a CEO relying on hiring superstar CFO or superstar CPA, guess what? you sure as heck better be paying them well and giving them equity or whatever else, golden handcuffs, because they're going to be jumping around. They're going to be constantly seeing new deals that are better than your deal. Um, so first and foremost, this is a huge reason if you're a business owner or investor that why you ought to consider hiring a dope CFO and outsourcing your accounting CFO and tax department. Um, if you do that, you don't have to worry about Sally or Joe quitting that that person has your engagement. They're going to build your team, bring in the bookkeeper, tax prep, whatever's needed, an audit. Um, we have the deepest, widest network in the U.S. by a mile. We have over 500 professionals in every state. Compare that to any national firm that's in cannabis. They might have 20, not 500. They won't catch us maybe forever, especially with those demographics we just talked about. Um, you can look at any survey. Big firms are having staffing problems. It's why we're hearing over and over, not just big firms, small firms, medium firms, big firms. They're having a lot of trouble delivering good service to their clients. They're just too busy. They're getting high-paid work whenever they want it. Um, they're so busy, it doesn't matter. They can actually get high-paid work and give poor service because there's endless amount of work. So I'm I'm really giving a lot of high-level <laughs> talk around surviving an audit in the cannabis industry, but this is probably the first and, and biggest key. Um, who the heck is managing your back house, your accounting, your tax, your HR, your compliance, your software? Who's who's that? I used to call it the right-hand man, the right-hand person, because I'm a, I'm a guy, but this applies to women, too. So... Who's that right-hand person backing you up? And are they world-class? Do they have access to a national community? Do they have the tool systems and work papers to make sure you're audit-ready all the time when the IRS shows up? Um, do they have the education? Do they, have they picked only this niche? Do you really want a generalist, even if it's a national firm, diving into your niche and that's super complicated and backing you up as well? Um, so that's, that's kind of at the highest level. And what I consult with business owners and investors, you're, I know you're seeing this 
I mean, and so first off, if you own a dispensary or farm, you're seeing this already, not even with the accounting. Bud tenders, farmers, immigration's down on the farming side, and, and those immigrants traditionally fill a lot of farming roles. So we're seeing this both the farming and dispensaries um, turnover. The big issues with staffing. Well, you're going to see that in the accounting side as well. You're going to have a lot of trouble. So you're, as a cannabis owner or investor, you're dealing with lots and lots of headaches and issues all the time. You don't need um, to deal with more headaches on the accounting and tax side. And oh, by the way, let's layer in another factor. The IRS has ramped up their budget, their amount of agents. And oh, by the way, they are coming in a Big, 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 big way after this industry, and it makes total sense. And it's not just the IRS. The states are going to come after you as well. The, the counties are going to come after you as well. Why? There's big, big dollars here for these audits. You can have a mom-and-pop cannabis company that's a 10 to $20 million company. You know, we saw this way back with the Alterman case, rinky-dink small farm in rural Colorado, and I think the ultimate IRS victory was half a million dollars. Or we look at a, a little bit bigger company like Harborside, they got $11 million. I think somewhere they said recently at the AICPA conference I was at, for, for every cannabis audit, the IRS collects $4 versus $1 to a non-cannabis audit. So it's 4x more profitable for the IRS to come after cannabis. So of course they're going to come after cannabis. Our counties are broke. Our states are broke. Our federal government's broke. They need money, all of them. So again, I'm expanding this talk beyond um, just IRS because you're going to get state audits. You're going to get maybe a bank audit, maybe an investor or M&A. You're going to need to be audit. So if that's another benefit of going with Dope CFO, if they're following our, our program correctly, we are going to set up a perpetual data room at day one. Um, what is that? That's something normally you do at an exit. Why the heck we do that at day one? Well, you know why? Because we want you to be audit ready all the time. Because the one, the auditors are coming. Two, you're likely going to be dealing with lenders and investors as you grow in this industry because it takes massive capital. So every time you do that, you're going to need audit ready books. Just to get banking in this industry, you're probably going to be undergoing a mini audit every single um, quarter as well. I'll just see something. I'll make sure. Um, you're going to be, yes, you're going to need for that. You might be doing M&A. And of course, someday you're, most of you are, are looking at an exit. So why not just be exit ready all the time when that opportunity comes, you're ready. It takes a lot to be audit ready. So the first thing we do when we go on board a client, we're going to set up a perpetual data room. We're going to get our PBC list, which is all of the key documents and items you have, whether it's leases or note payable documents or le legal corporate documents or board minutes or bank statements or tax records and on and on. We're going to get it organized for you on your, your servers. We are going to build a permanent audit trail for you every single month using um, kind of what I teach out of my background out of Big Four and tick marks and tie outs, including cost accounting. So if I'm your CFO and I drop over dead and the IRS shows up two, two years from now, they don't need me anyway. You've got your stuff. You've got it tick marked and tie out. It's audit ready. You're good to go. That adds huge value to you. And guess what? Nobody does this stuff outside of Dope CFO. I've never seen it done once, even though it's Talking about it here, um, most firms and even cannabis firms, they're going after a different business model. They are grabbing lots and lots of clients and doing as minimum amount of work as they can do for the dollar. And they'll do the tax return, they'll do the bookkeeping, but they're not doing the deep dive and doing those extra high value item, items. And so, so that's one um, side of the thing. Oh, another piece, we'll put in controls and corporate governance from day one, accounting policies and procedures. Again, that's part of getting audit ready. Not even just getting audit ready, that helps make sure you are you have controls in place to make sure there's no fraud or theft. Make sure that you actually have segregation of duties and things to add more value to your organization. We'll do that immediately. And we'll make sure if there's any cleanup needed, we will jump into that as well. Um, let's talk real quickly about not getting flagged for an audit. They're super easy ways to get, they're already coming after you, but if you want them to come after you even quicker, here's a good way, throw everything into cost to get sold. That'd be a great way. I've seen many, many companies do that. Oh, it's all cost to get sold. Let's do that. Or um, another one, 471C, that's everyone's favorite topic. Do that. Just 
elect the cash method and, and don't worry about the now your books are totally worthless basically for running your company. Um, but yeah, that's probably going to bring eyes to your tax return quickly. Another biggie going around. Oh, the ERC credit. Can we get away with it? Can we not? It was very debatable at the AICPA Cannabis Conference where we had congressmen, industry leaders, attorneys, IS. IRS professionals, and there was no consensus, A, that this strategy will even work at all, if it will. Um, but secondly, if you go back and start amending returns with this ERC credit, um, great. They're going to just jump on you. And so we, we weigh the pros and cons. Oh, yeah. Do you want to focus on that credit? And uh, maybe we'll, we'll get you 50 grand from 2019 back. But oh, by the way, the IRS is going to come audit you and, and collect 2 million because your books are all screwed up or whatever. Or they're going to they're going to go on as well. Um, <laughs> um, Erica, <laughs> preach. I have a legit CPA. Yeah, this isn't just bookkeepers. They're CPAs as well. And many people who are just generalists, they're again, this isn't to knock CPAs. They are freaking busy. So right this second, I've talked about this. I've been helping my wife with my father-in-law. He is going, like many of our elderly people, um, having medical issues. We're trying to help him with his, his. he's got a couple of LCs and oil and gas and tax entities. And he's got that with one firm. He's got another stuff with another firm. We're using RSM for the personal stuff. And we're using an attorney on doing some estate stuff. Guess what? They're all either at 70 or over 70, they we can't get emails back. They are swamped. <laughs> they don't have time to do anything. Um, and so if they all of a sudden grab a cannabis client, who the heck has time to figure out the cannabis industry? They're going to do whatever. Oh, the I heard the attorney said we could put it all on cost of goods sold. Let's go do that. Um, so anyway... Yeah, if to do this industry right, you have to actually take the time to do cost accounting. If you're a farmer or manufacturer or processing plant or whatever, you have to do that. It takes lots of tools and systems and work papers to do it correctly. Most of the industry um, does not have anything close to that. And you actually have to have the knowledge of how to do it. And you have to do it each month. You don't just code something to rent expense and forget about it. You have to come back and do that cost accounting. So anyway, lots and lots of ideas around surviving um, that IRS audit. They are coming. It's not just IRS audits you need to worry about. Um, I guess um, I love these Facebook lives. Just like you say, Erica, I get to preach. <laughs> Nobody can talk back to me or, or counteract me, but we always have our comments and people can tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, I would say... I've got three or four national firms now that has take, taken my education. I teach with the AICPA at their events as well as our CPE. So I think a lot of the um, industry is listening to me. Um, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that will continue. Um, a lot of what I teach is simple. It doesn't. It's just it's nuts and bolts. It's like you know when I build the house. Yeah, there's probably cheap lumber I can grab and cheap nails. And instead of putting in 40 nails when I hammer that board up, maybe I just put in four and who cares if it falls apart two, two weeks later. I want to do rock solid accounting and tax at the foundational level. Um, and I want to provide white glove service to our clients. That's what CEOs crave right now. They don't get it. Um, I don't get it as, a, as when I'm outside this role, like working with my wife, Steph, and and I just, I expect it now, whether I'm calling the airlines or an attorney or an accountant or a CPA firm, I know, like if I get an email back in a week or so, I'm lucky. Um, and nobody's giving me deep service. Forget tax planning. <laughs> Who has time for tax planning? Well, I do. And dope CFOs do. Um, so anyway, that is about all I've got today. I hope, hope this helps some of you and we will keep putting out this content and um, hopefully it will help you all. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody.